In this example, we will see that work is a path function. The amount of work we obtain depends on the path we choose. And here, the path that we are going to differentiate is whether we are going to lift off the weight that, are s that is supporting the pressure inside the gas all at once, or in two installments, or in infinitesimal uh, uh, removal of the grains, uh, so that we are going to have the final removal of mass in a rapid, somewhat slow, and very slow of processes. So uh, this process, as you see, the piston and cylinder assembly do not have an insulation, so we have thermal contact with the environment. And in the initial condition, we have thermal equilibrium with the environment. Now, a removing of the mass, whether it is all at once or in taking infinitely long time is going to make some difference in how our process evolves. But before we do so, let's remember what is work and how it is related, what is isothermal work and how it is related to the PV diagram. Now, PV diagram for an ideal gas goes like this. This is volume. This is pressure, and for an ideal gas, P is inversely proportional to volume at constant temperature. So we have a reciprocal relationship, and this is our constant temperature line. Now, the work for an isothermal process, we have already seen, we have already derived, that work for an isothermal process is minus P dV integral. This is, this is work in general. But work for an isothermal process is the area under this curve. Between V1 and V2. And our direction is here. Okay? This is work for an isothermal process. Uh, that the area under the isotherm, the constant temperature curve, of a PV diagram is going to give us the amount of work that we obtained, or in the opposing direction, the amount of work that we do on this system. Now, the physics of the situation is like that. When I remove this mass all at once, the system is not necessarily evolving isothermally. That removing this weight removes the pressure uh, constraint the system reaches a mechanical equilibrium that the pressures are equalized. But since this piston moved very rapidly, the gas inside the cylinder is going to be colder than the environment. And it will warm up with time and the pressure will adjust itself with time. Temperature will adjust itself with time. So the moment I remove the weight, the system reaches mechanical equilibrium first, so this is my isotherm, the temperature of the environment, my final pressure is this. My final pressure 
is this. But my process starting from P1 has evolved by a mechanism which I do not know yet, but not necessarily an isothermal mechanism, a sudden expansion to the external pressure, to an unknown volume, and then here, while keeping the external pressure constant, my system has reached equilibrium. Now what happened when I removed the mass all at once, that my gas is, my gas has cooled down to a new temperature which is lower than the environment temperature. And between this temperature and that temperature, heat exchange has taken place. How much work did I obtain? As a result, as a result, I obtained work that is identified by the area under this curve. Right? This is situation one. This is ideal isothermal condition. Now let's look at situation number two. I'm going to remove the weight into installments. Here's a P and V that I have my constant temperature curve. I start from P1. When I remove half of the weight, I arrive at the intermediate pressure. When I remove the full weight, I arrive at P external. Okay. So I start from P1. I remove the weight. The piston moved up. Suddenly, the mechanical equilibrium has to be established first. Then the thermal equilibrium. Then I remove the second weight. Mechanical equilibrium has to be established first through a process which I make no claims. Then the thermal equilibrium at constant pressure. Okay. And the work I obtain in this situation is this area under this curve. All right. And the area under this curve is greater than the area under this curve by some amount. Right? So much more work I can obtain by simply dividing the weight into two and allowing the system reach thermal equilibrium. Now, the third situation that I do the removal in infinitely small installments. This is again my external temperature isotherm. Gives rise to the following situation. I just remove one grain. System equilibrates, one grain. System equilibrates, one grain. System equilibrates. Now you see I'm in the vicinity of my isotherm, I'm just doing this process so slow that I'm almost at thermal equilibrium. All right? And my work is almost equal to the ideal isothermal situation. All right? So there are two terms that I introduced in this discussion. One is mechanical equilibrium.
and the other one is thermal equilibrium. Mechanical equilibrium refers to the equalities of forces. Thermal equilibrium refers to the equality of temperatures. So when the forces are equal, the forces are balanced, that system is at mechanical equilibrium, like in this situation, like in this situation. Thermal equilibrium is that the system and its environment are at equal temperatures. Yeah, now the difference between these situations are pretty much obvious that when you do carry out a process, you get more work, all right? You get more work. And work is a path function. The path you take to obtain work changes the amount of work that you obtain. So we have learned another term, path function. Okay? And of course, we have to also indicate what are path functions and what are not. And if they are not path functions, what are they? Work and heat are path functions, while temperature, the opposite of path function is state function. Path functions depend on the path, while the state functions are independent of the path taken. They only depend on the state of the system, initial and final state of the system. State, temperature, pressure, specific volume, specific internal energy, specific enthalpy are state functions. So this wraps up the uh, discussions about the first law.